Hi, it's Sarah here um, from Roxy Creations by Sarah. Um, I just thought I'd do another video um, about my trip to Italy and the things that I've found here, some of the things that I've found here because there's some really cool stuff that would be great for um, any type of crafting. Um, so I do a lot of embroidery like my sister and putting together pieces of um, textiles as well as now I've discovered the world of journaling so I'll be doing some of that as well. Um, so first I'm going to start off with some of these linens that I've discovered. Um, we've gone to a couple of antique stores. This one has beautiful um, embroidered colourful flowers around which would be really great to scan um, the little little bits and pieces for the journals. Um, this is a um, really nice um, elaborate uh, doily that's been handmade uh, vintage. Uh, this one I absolutely love. I'm going to hold it up higher because it's very delicate but very tiny cross stitch and I love birds and that's kind of a Christmassy bird. Um, uh, this one I thought would be really good to make as a book cover and do some work on it and then use it to cover a journal. Um, I really love bright colours and I love this embroidery. All of these pieces I've just shown you, they're really cheap. They're only one euro at the antique market. Um, so we went to a couple of different ones and found all these bits and pieces. So this is quite a big tablecloth with some um, gorgeous flowers embroidered and then a larger sort of centerpiece. Again, that would be great for scanning and putting into journals. Um, this one is also a larger tablecloth but with much paler embroidery. We have... Um, pale pink and white flowers with beautiful leaves and I love these little um, embroidered dots the detail on there and then there's um, different flowers on the other side this one is uh, more of one of those Chinese style this is actually a piece that Rachel gave me for Christmas because I love um, I love Asian things particularly Japanese but this embroidery is absolutely beautiful and there's four different ladies on this so just show you one of them close up and then beautiful flowers as well another one of the ladies uh, this one again quite a big piece I think this one was only three euro which is cheap as chips as far as I'm concerned I think it's a bit of a decorative piece to put on a table um, with lots of really bright embroidered, embroidered flowers um, I, I don't think I could bring myself to cut something like that up. This one it looks like it's a hand towel and it has some beautiful cross stitch. Uh, this one is a larger style of cross stitch. I love cross stitch. It takes many hours to get cross stitch done and it looks like a very small um, table, table cloth like you'd put it on top of a, on top of a table to sort of decorate the centre. So that one could even be uh, suitable for Christmas because it's plain reds. Now this is absolutely divine. Um, this uh, we found at the market and my sister bought it for me for my birthday. So it's a really old piece of tapestry with amazing animals, flowers, birds, butterflies, etc. It's just stunning. Um, so that, that I could scan bits and pieces of that as well, which would be really nice. Um, this uh, I found just at a market on the weekend, an antique market. It's actually a growth chart. So it starts off with a baby chick coming out of the egg. Then the chick gets bigger. And it's getting bigger and bigger until it turns into a rooster. I thought that would be great for Easter, um, scanning that and putting putting that into your Easter journal. Now this is my favourite piece. Um, this one cost me a little bit more but I couldn't walk away without getting it. The work in it is amazing. So it's literally like a wall hanging that runs down with all the months and with each month there is a bird. And the work in the bird, it's tiny cross stitch. It's just stunning. So we've got January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November and December. 
I mean, those birds are absolutely beautiful. You could um, you could definitely scan each one and use them in a lot of different things. So they are all my sort of embroidered bits and pieces. And then um, I bought quite a few papers. So I bought pretty standard papers. Um, these ones were from Venice. No, Florence, this one. Um, these are pretty standard, just uh, reproduction prints. Um, this one as well. But they're from old designs. Um, so Florentine papers from quite some time ago. This is my favourite. I love navy blue. Um, so I've actually cut all my bits down. These were really big sheets, but because I'm needing to go home, um, I've actually bought a big folder and cut them down. Now these ones were from a very um, tiny paper shop in Venice. And they're actually um, printed copies of original blocks that they carved and they stamped. This one isn't actually a hand stamped one. Um, they were really expensive. The hand stamped ones were like 40 euro a sheet, ridiculous. These were reproductions and we actually bought bits and pieces. We bought off cuts and then one whole sheet and one whole sheet was about, I think it was about 12 euro or something. So it still wasn't cheap compared to the other ones where I could find papers for a massive sheet for about two euros 20. Um, this one was the hand printed one. It's cut down, but that one was expensive. Rachel and I both bought some of that. Um, again, similar, similar style. I loved all these houses and I love the colouring in the papers. This one's a pink one with a beautiful gondola and obviously the gorgeous houses in um, Venice. And this one is a hand printed one as well. It's just an off cut. I thought the fish were really cool, so I just bought a little piece of that. I like fish. So they're sort of my printed papers. And then in addition to them, I got um, some other papers. Some of these are hand marbled, some are printed. So um, this was like a scrap pack with pieces that you could buy. So you didn't really choose what you got. You just got what was in the pack. Beautiful marbled paper. I'd love to have a go at marbling. I did it when I was young um, at school and I'd love to have another go um, and see what you can come up with. These are all some of the marble papers that I found from, from a few few different shops as well, a few offcuts. I like offcuts because you really don't need huge pieces. Um, I certainly don't do any big scrapbooking or anything that requires huge pieces. That's very bright. That was a off cut of a piece of paper, beautiful design. Um, all these are really just unique, unique patterns. And then this was a pack of marbling paper that I bought. So different colours, beautiful greens and blues. It's just amazing how all the patterns are so different. This was a um, map of Venice. Uh, it's a printed uh, reproduction, but I just thought that was beautiful. I don't know what the date is. I can't see if there's a date on there. I might have to have a get a magnifying glass because the writing's really tiny, but I just thought that was beautiful. And again, some papers, different printed papers. I've already used a bit of this. We use some of these in our snow globes, sticking them on the bases. So there's some of the papers. I did buy some other sort of more commercial, like Florentine wrapping papers and things like that. But um, I got a lot, so I won't I won't show you all of that. What I will show you now is I bought some beautiful trims. Um, just let me bring them over. Some of these, these ones here. The lady told us that these trims were. I think from like the 1700s or 1800s so they're really old we both got some um, so we will be we will be scanning my sister Rachel and I will be scanning some and putting them into digital packs for other people to use they're just gorgeous we did get a lot of the same and then we got some that were a bit different Just really Christmassy, these ones. I can't remember how much they were, but they were so cheap. This was at the antique market that we found these. This pretty pink one. 
And then we went to another antique market on the weekend in my sister's local town and I found some of these. These were apparently from the 1800s as well. So I'm just bring that a bit closer so you can see. Um, oh, she threw this one in just as a bonus because we bought a bit of stuff. I thought that was quite nice as well. Kind of goes along with the colours that I bought. These ones from the 1800s as well. Just love them. Beautiful designs. And then this one's probably my favourite. I think Rachel bought some of that one as well. So we've got some beautiful trims to work with. Um, then when we were in um, Florence, we found a little antique market and we found these amazing little books. So they were printed, I think it was uh, 1901, um, but they're, they're based on the 1800s. So there were different years. So there was volumes, volumes. I think I got volume one, two, and then I got a later one. And, and Rach got a few as well. So they're just amazing. If we have a look inside, they're kind of falling apart. But just amazing images of what life was like during those times. So I've had a good look through them. I'm not going to show you all of them. Um, but I'll just show you this one so you get the idea. So looking at what currency was like and what life was like during those years. Then there are old book pages. They're just amazing. 1802. Can't even imagine how long ago that was. Life was quite different. Um, in the antique market we found in Chisena, which is um, not too far from where my sister lives, I found this old school book. Um, and the thing I liked about it was that someone's work is in it. Not that I can understand the Italian. I'm sure Rachel could, but... I just love all the handwriting. It's so different to what we do now. I mean, we work mostly in schools, a lot on computers nowadays. So much work has gone into that. Um, then I found some letters and postcards. This was from, oh, I can't find the year, but I know it was the early 1900s, and I was amazed that they actually used a typewriter. Where was he? Oh, sorry, 1921. And then envelopes look at the writing it's so different to what what we're like nowadays and then inside this envelope there's actually several letters so some beautiful beautiful different styles of writing and then this was these are just like little postcards that people would write information to other people everything I've bought um, like all these things are all sort of very early I think 1937 look at the script and the fact that it's been kept by someone uh, 1840 I have no idea what that is Rachel will tell me looks like a list of something that someone's bought I don't know but I just love all this old stuff and then bought a couple more postcards um, 1911 and 1913. Different styles of writing on the back. Um, I'll just show you the music paper. So these music, this is a music score from 1916, which I thought would be really great to scan. And there's different styles, so it's quite large in the centre and then very tiny on the back. And then this one here, excuse my arm, <laughs> this one here is also, it's a music score. Someone's covered it in paper. I'm going to see if I can steam the paper off. It's just glued a little bit on the middle. But if you have a look, I can't pull it too far because I don't want to rip it. I want to see if I can steam it off. Um, it's got a beautiful cover and back page as well. Okay, now this was amazing. This was part of my birthday present from my sister these are old French letters I think she told me oh I can't remember what year she told me 1700s or something and they are just amazing like that's an embossed stamp and so is that they're just and the paper is actually really thick it would have been beautiful handmade paper several pages this one 
opens out. So sorry, seventeen ninety three. This one, and then there's two more in here. Actually, three more in here. So there's four in total. Let me just undo it. And again, the paper, it's thick. You can just tell it's handmade. Not like what we use nowadays. Four pages of leather. I'm just going to see if I can see a date. Can't read it, but they're all 17, sort of 1700s. Very, very precious. And again, the stamps on them. The presses and the final one. 1849, I think it is. Just amazing. And then finally, I bought, um, found this little book. It was from 1913. And I just love that someone's actually taken notes throughout it. It's coming apart a little bit, but I thought I might use the back and front and then use pages and make a little tiny pocket journal, which I thought might be cute. And then finally, I've got a lot of like labels and postcards. So I won't go through all these labels, but we found all these really old labels. Apparently, they're from the early, very start of the 1900s, um, which would be really cool to scan and to use in journals. I think some of them might be wine labels, I'm not sure. But they're all old, really old vintage um, labels from Italy. And then this is my postcard stack. So there's actually a lot. Um, so I found some gorgeous ones. Some have writing on them, some don't. Uh, most of them are at least the early 1900s. Some I think are older. I tried to get a few Easter ones because I'm going to hopefully make an Easter journal, 1924, um, with that old one of the Colosseum. We'll be seeing that in a few days' time. On Saturday, I think we're going to go see that. Love Mushrooms and Birds, 1906. This one's gorgeous. It's a Christmas one. Um... 1903 this one is probably one of my favorites some of these ones in these things and they're embossed they were more expensive some of them were only one euro but then they went up i think i bought some as high as five euro which is still not bad at all back home we can get things not as old and they're a lot more expensive again birds love birds um as you can see the bird theme is continuing um, 1902 I think that one was uh, this one is a April Fool's Day apparently in France for April 1st they give you things with fish on them they're meant to be jokes and I think you've given this one to my dad because it's my dad's birthday on the April the 1st and I thought that was pretty cool um, this one's actually hand painted you can feel the paint you can feel the texture just amazing. This one's embossed. 1906, I think it says. Oh, these, these are a few more of my labels. These are older ones, so these aren't ones that I'd be scanning. But I just love the images on them. So I'll probably use them in my own journals, I think. Because they're just really cool. More postcards. Santa, that's a newer one. I can feel that that's a newer postcard. Uh, this was in Venice. This is the, I think it's called the Whispering Bridge or something. I've got to look up what the story is of that. Um, but we've, we've got some photos of that. There's a lot of Christmas cards around at the moment because we were here at Christmas time. So you'll see there's quite a few. Sweet is that? 1965, that one. My son loves snowmen, so I had to get some snowmen for him. And I love cats as well. So 
That was really cute. 1961. Lots of Christmas postcards and more cats. <laughs> I like my cats. 1966. This one's an old one. No, oh no, 1970. Not as old as I thought. Uh, this was for my son. I actually haven't given this to him yet. Apparently they used to stick these in cheese. I thought that was pretty cool. I think it's French, but I thought it was cool um, for his journal. I also like deers, so I found a few with deers on. And I've actually put a couple of the old ones I've found in my own journal. That's 1968. I mean, they're so cute. The Easter ones. Definitely going to put together an Easter pack and make myself an Easter journal. I've collected quite a few Easter cards, as you can see. 1962. A lot of the cute, cute cards from Easter and Christmas came out in the 60s. I much prefer receive something like this from someone with a note on it than our modern day <laughs> expensive Christmas cards. These are much cuter. Some more deers. Oh, the cute little squirrel. This one's kind of got gold, a gold embossed egg. 1963. This one is really nice. I actually love that it's got the writing on the front. That one was three euro. 1905, that one. It's an early one. That one's embossed. I believe when they're embossed, they can be um, some of the older ones, but I think that one's 56, 1956. Some more cats. 1902. These ones I got three. I'll just show you all three. Similar, similar sort of style. Um, there's no date on them. They look quite old with sort of the the artificial colouring that they used to do. Another Christmas. Oh, sorry, Easter. No more bunnies. This one's really pretty. I like the bird, and again, it's got that in that colouring. Uh, Nineteen eighteen. That one. And you can find these all over the place. They have a lot of these things. It's good that they value old things in Italy. Um, can't quite read that. Maybe 1944. And then this was a animal protection card. Again with a cute cat. And where you put your information. And a monkey on the back. So that's a quick video of all the different things that I found um, in Italy. I do have a little bit more, but that's sort of the, the main things that I'll be using for my creating, for uh, my journaling and also for some of my sewing. I hope you um, enjoyed seeing some of the things. It's always fun to go to a different country and find things that are different from what's back at home. And I will hopefully be doing some creating with them. Ciao.